Anyone that's been to a sport. Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Where are you at in terms of a starting lineup? What do you want to see from Team USA? I think he'll get guys involved, and then there's your lockdown defender at the point guard, the point of attack, right? I do like Curry. I would then go with Ant. I like Ant over Booker. I think if you look at the way the Canada game was, they looked kind of slow starting, and then they, they kind of got rolling. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. He talked about uh, Major League Baseball and its uh, its rule, or actually its uh, its relationship with sports betting and gambling. Integrity is the foremost concern, and a lot of people are questioning that given all the scandals, right? There's uh, Mercano, there's Pat Hoberg, one of the best umpires in MLB suspended right now. We don't exactly know what he did, but he's been disciplined, and he hasn't umpired a game this year. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. <laughs> Your mustache is falling. Mustache is falling off. It's got to go. <laughs> Skeen's got another strike out there. I don't want to take. As soon as I take it off, they're going to give up a run. I'm, I'm trying to keep it on until he comes out of the game. It's all over the place. <laughs> Come on, I'm superstitious. He's got you know ten. He's got ten Ks. He's cruising. Wow. They pulled so, Skeen's, by the way. Yeah, they pulled him. Yeah. Okay. Mustache. Yeah. The Bostonian versus the book. You know, their website is 7milecasino.com. You want to play blackjack, poker, other table games? You want to have a great lunch, dinner, brunch on the weekends? It's the best in South County, according to San Diego Magazine readers. And if you want to have a great time watching ball games, eating great food, a good drink, and table games everywhere, no smoking, easy parking, right off the freeway, I could keep going on and on. But let's just say it like this. 7 Mile Casino is the best place to play in all of San Diego. So, Great friends, we are here on a Thursday. I mentioned to you yesterday that later on today I'll be heading to Rams training camp, and I'll have news for you by tomorrow. And it uh, looks like the Rams already have a major injury happening on the defensive side of the ball. We'll get to that. Uh, what happened last night with the Dodgers and the Giants and uh, the return of Tyler Glass now for the Dodgers, plus tonight the return of Clayton Kershaw. We'll get to all of that. The Padres have now won four straight games. They beat Washington last night. And there were some weird things that happened at the end of that game when the Padres were just absolutely putting it on Washington. We'll get into that story. And by the way, they're in a rain delay right now because that game was supposed to be happening as we speak. Um, and a bunch of Olympic stuff we want to get to. Uh, there's a lot. There is a lot to get to today. Grande, Brown Man, guys, hello. I think we should probably start with a major issue that we're dealing with internally on the show with one of our family oh. members. Oh, that that sounds serious. Seems serious to me. Seems serious to me, Brownie. You got that look. You got that. I don't look. know anything about this. You don't, huh? No. An internal issue with one with of one our of family our, members. With one of our family members. Well, right. there's a lot because Browner's got four kids. You got four kids. I got a wife. There's a lot. That's nine people here. There's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. I mean, if we really want to get deep into details, I my I, my kids had to be disciplined because they ripped all the paint off of a door. Oh, really? How do you yeah, rip the but, paint off of a door? Yeah, how'd that happen? I have three four year olds with a with a door and some paint on it. <laughs> Don't know, man. Browner yeah. got triplets. He got three triplet boys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was so funny. Last week when we went to that San Diego State event at, in Mission Valley. Mm -hmm. And Brown brought his three kids. Event. I yeah. probably 
I probably was around his kids for, I don't know, three minutes. And at that point I was like, good enough. Let's yeah. Get gotta get out of here. Gotta, gotta get away get from these here. kids. Right. Yep. I know. I know the way it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Believe me when I tell you, you know, somebody who has four grown kids now, when I go to a restaurant and I got to deal with somebody else's kids or I'm like, shut that kid up, you know, or now I'm back to the point where if I'm on a plane and somebody's kid is crying, I'm like giving them the look, like shut that, shut that kid up. Whereas back in the old mm-hmm. days, I was on the that receiving end. I was on the right. receiving end of those looks. And my look when I was holding the baby was like, help me. Somebody please help me. But now Dude, I'm back I to try... the other guy. The other guy like, shut that kid up. <laughs> I try to always be aware of other people's, you know, uh, uh, volume space mm-hmm. when I'm with the kids because they're loud and they destroy everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so I try to keep them in a quarantined area. Whenever mm-hmm. I take them like to a restaurant, I always sit in the booth. Whenever I take them to something like that's outdoors, I always kind of corner them off to where you just stay over here because one of them crawled under a table to chase a car, kicking <laughs> people's feet, just just a mess. So, yeah, I mean, that every morning there's something. So, yeah, but I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Well, here's what I'm talking about. So while you got four kids, little ones, and I got four grown, and Grande here don't have no kids, but he does have a dog. And this dog, mm. by the way, is is like it, it is dealing with a child i mean having a dog especially when you're married and you don't have children that dog is your child so tell us what happened to the dog because when you and i once you told it to me i said time out don't tell me anything else yeah what happened to the dog so i would say this is probably a very common occurrence if you take a dog out to parks and stuff especially right now that it's hot and there's a lot of wildlife out there uh, took the dog to a place called Fiesta Island. For those people that don't live in San Diego, it's a big island here off the, the coast. And uh, there's a very large dog dog park there. And like one loop around that thing takes about 30 minutes. So we took the dog out there. It was hot, trying to get some uh, ocean breeze. And when we got home, noticed like a little blood on the top right of the, uh, of the eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Dog, dude. I think she's got like whatever those hunter dogs are, the ones that you like go shoot a duck and then the, the dogs go find it. Like she's got that in her. She's got the little hunter in her. So there's all these like moles or groundhogs or whatever they're called. And she sticks her nose all the way up in there. Like she's, she's just all up in there. That's her thing. So I was like, ah, she probably got scratched by one of them or something. Anyways, gets home. We wipe her down. No blood. But that dot is just this big red dot just hanging out right there. And we're making dinner. We're chilling. Next thing you know, this dog runs over to us and is like, yo. And, and we look at her and, she, and we're like, yo, what the hell, dude? Eye swollen shut. Big old lump on top of the head. No like, way. Dude, like a lump, like she, like an old cartoon Bugs Bunny thing, you know? Eye swollen. She's rubbing it. She's like, what the hell's happening? Big old lump. And she's never been... You know, she's never had any, she's has allergies, but she's not, that's never happened to her. And, uh, this is what it looked like. And this is what we started freaking out about. We're like, yo, this dog's eye is shut. Ooh. <laughs> like she got yeah. punched. Yeah. Right. It looked like she got punched. Right. Like you can't really see the lump on the, on the top of her head, but that lump continued to like her ear. But I can see, I can see, sorry to laugh, man. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's funny now. Right? I can see that the left eye is like wide open and the yeah. right eye is like, like, like kind of half shut. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can yeah. see the swelling over her right eye. Yeah. 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 So it was, uh, you know, it was a debacle. So we, it's at this point also, it's like eight something at night, eight 30 at night. And, uh, our vets closed. And we're just like, what do we do? So I start looking up 24 hour emergency vets, hit one up and they're like, what's going on with your dog? And they're like, okay, bring her in. We get there. Got to go all the way to Sorrento Valley, north of the eight. Oh, you had back to go to north of the eight? Twice, twice yesterday. Because I went to your house yesterday too. So yeah, you came and picked up some athletic greens. Yes, I did. And I chugged it this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, we go up there and we, the sliding doors open and they're like five hour wait. Whoa. And I'm like, bro, five hours. I'm going to be here till <laughs> two or three in the morning. Yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever. I mean, this dog's eyes shut. What am I going to do? Leave? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, we kind of figured she got stung by something at that point, but you, you don't know. Dude, I guess it was a big deal because they came out and they took her and they treated her immediately. 
because I don't know if like stings, they were telling us like stings can cause some stuff in their gallbladder, their, their stuff in their brain, the swelling may never reduce, blah, blah, blah. So they got her, took her back there, uh, shaved her eyebrow to get uh, remove the stinger. Mm-hmm. And they did a bunch of tests on her and they gave her some, um, some Benny, some Benadryl. Yeah. And we were there for like an hour and then uh-huh. we were home and this girl's right back to normal. Minus oh the eyebrow. God. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, dude! So she got stung in the eye or above her eye by a bee. By a bee. By wow. a bee. And luckily, she's not allergic to bees. It was just a little did scare. You, did, at any That's point, because I see somebody in our live YouTube chat is already kind of getting to us about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, did she come off sounding like Mike Tyson? Look at me, man! Look at my eye! <laughs> Look at my eye, man! Look at me! I got- one eye he got two ears look at me man she was rubbing that thing like she was so confused dude she was so confused like what is happening to me right now (laughs) i'm like i don't know (laughs) so all Um, good all good man browner see no problem so what the three kids they ripped the paint off the off the door who cares man what's more expensive the paint off your door or my 250 dollar vet bill dude you got pet insurance i don't it's too late i can that's a long story Okay, because it, it depends so on if they now. eat the paint. Yeah, yeah. kids eat the oh. paint. We don't have any proof of that, but ain't no teller. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Well, I hope your dog's okay, Alex. You know, we She's all love fine. dogs. Back to normal, dude. Back to people. Normal. People love their dogs. I know people were kind of worried that you were going to say that he got that the dog got bit, that it wasn't a bee, that it was a rattlesnake, and people are hey. in our YouTube chat. Joe Rigby, shout out to you, Joe. Says he's killed three rattlesnakes at his property already so far this year. Yeah, How luckily no. Him? Like, I'd take, like, a four iron and just chop their head off. You know what I'm saying? Smash that thing. Yeah. You got to spit on that thing. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't spit on that thing. I don't think you do. No, please don't. Please don't. Mm-mm. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. What he's doing on a five-day basis, and when he pitches at that ballpark, if there's one thing you notice, there's not one empty seat. The excitement he's brought to that city and the fact that fans are starting to come back, especially on the nights he pitches, I mean, it, it is so cool to see. It's so overdue, and you can't help but root for Pittsburgh. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. You mean to tell me Kevin Durant could just get a free trip and Jalen Brown telling y'all I can play? Y'all won't put what they got to get. They will not put Jalen Brown on this team. They'll give them who get hurt. He's an NBA professional billionaire superstar player. I feel like this is just an opinion. The Olympics should be about Olympians, not about pros that come to represent as Olympians. Only on Sports Grid. Hey, on Kaplan and crew. Whether you are watching on Sports Grid around the country live as we speak at this exact moment, if you are listening to Sports Grid Radio Channel 159 on Sirius XM, we're glad you guys are with us. I do want to tell you as we kick off, this segment is being brought to us by our friends at Blenders Eyewear. My father called me from Boca Del Vista Phase 4 in Delray Beach, darling, and he said to me, he said, hey, Do you know if your boy Chase, the guy who's the CEO and founder of Blender's Eyewear, do you know if your boy Chase ever comes down here to Delray? Because my parents are like, we didn't know, but there is a Blender's store in Delray Beach, Florida. And my father says to me, he goes, hey, if your boy Chase is coming down, I'd like to go to the Blender's store and hang out with him and meet him for a little bit. He goes, do you think your code Kaplan 
works at the Blender store in Delray Beach, Florida. I'm like, yeah, it works. Works everywhere. If you go to BlendersEyewear.com and you want to buy some new sunglasses from Blenders because you love the polarized lenses and you love the really cool frames and you really love the price point, use the code Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N. You'll save 20%, whether it's in-store or online. You guys think uh, Chase is going to be like, yo, I'm going to be down in Delray. You may have your father's number. Maybe we'll play a little pickleball, baby. I was about to say, is he a pickleball guy? Because if he's a pickleball guy, absolutely. Your dad yeah. and, and Chase dominating the courts at phase four? Yeah. Be yeah. pretty good. Be really pretty good. Dope. That'd be yeah. a good reel for Blender's eyewear. <laughs> Would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, listen, we're, we're just underway. Let me say this. I'm going today... Uh, later this afternoon, and I'm going to Rams training camp at Loyola Marymount University. I've never been to Loyola Marymount. Um, I think the only thing I even know about Loyola Marymount, wasn't there a player like in the late 80s or the early 90s with Hank? Hank? Anybody? Hank? Like died Bauer. on the floor? No, not Hank oh. Bauer. Um, Hank Browner, I'm surprised Hill. this one. Who? Hank Hill. I don't think it was Hank Hill either. I think oh. like that. I don't know anything about Loyola Marymount University. I've never been there. This is the first time the Rams are having Hank training camp gathers. there. Hank gathers. Yes. Like that's the only thing I even remember about Loyola Marymount. And it's been like, I don't know, 30 years. So I'm going there today. Never been on the campus. Um, checking Sister out Rams Jean. training camp. Well, you, Oh, Sister Jean. She got Loyola yeah. Marymount though. No, hell no. Nah. She's a uh, Loyola, Loyola. Uh, Chicago. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a whole different Loyola yeah. B. Yeah. Didn't, you know wasn't saying? didn't Kobe use Loyola Marymount like Kawhi uses the Jam Center? Wasn't that Kobe's go-to practice off-season facility? That's the only thing I know about Loyola Marymount. Yeah, I don't even I don't know where it's at. Yeah, it's in LA somewhere. So I'm gonna uh, schlep up to Loyola Marymount today. Loyola Marymount, gonna... Marymount, like the Point Loma Nazarene of LA. Like no one knows about it, but it's probably like beautiful and has views and stuff. I will have an answer like for Biola. you tomorrow. I will have an answer for you tomorrow. All I know is this: the Rams have moved training camp there today uh, for this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, never been don't know anything about it. I do think they're a West coast conference school. So I think they play against, you know, Gonzaga and San Diego and St. Mary's and all these other kinds of schools, but I don't know anything about Loyola Marymount, but I'm going there today and I'll have a full report for you as of tomorrow. But I will say this, a lot of NFL news today, a lot of headlines as again, training camps are in full swing. I made such a mistake. Let me tell you what a terrible, uh, what a terrible faux pas. I made, if you will, okay? And I never mm -hmm. use the word faux pas. I don't even know if I'm using it correctly. I don't even know what it really means, but I think it means a mistake. Mm -hmm. So I have been texting with John Lynch, the general manager of the 49ers. And for those of you that are listening around the country that are new to the show, I know that sounds like a name drop, and I guess it is. Right? It is. Oh, obviously. It is. Yeah, and All it right. sort of sounds like a humble brag, which unintentional, but kind of the, the deal. But locally, everybody here knows that John Lynch has been a part of the show and has been part of the family for 25 years because his dad, who is really one of the founders of the sports radio format in the country, he, he, we worked for the dad for years, okay? So John Lynch and I go way, way, way back. Anyway, I'm texting Besties. John. Yeah, I, we're like kids are friends, you know what I mean? Know the family well. Dad is like a mm -hmm. second father to me kind of thing, like really close, right? So I send John Lynch a text. I'm like, hey, we got to get you on the show, right? And he's like, okay, no problem. Let me know. Got you. Then I send him another text. Hey, man, just staying on your radar, wondering when's a good time, want to just make sure everything's cool, right? Sends me back. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Next week, blah, 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 right? Then yesterday I sent him a text. I go, hey, Johnny, we want to get you on the show. He writes me back this morning. It's like 7 oh, o'clock yes. in the morning. He writes me back this morning. Hmm. It's like 7 a.m. And yeah. it's kind of like it, it's a sweetheart message, but it's kind of like saying, hey, jerk. Do you not know what's going on, right? Are right. you not following the news? And, and I actually said to him, I go, dude, I should probably read this to you. Because I said to him, I go, man, when I sent that text yesterday, I felt like such a dumbass. Um, he said to me, he goes, he goes, hey, man, how you doing? He goes, I really want to help you out and do the show. We got a couple of situations with player holdouts, and I've been advised to just kind of lay low, you know. Um, I'll do that. <laughs> so hopefully we get quick resolution on these things, and I'll come on as soon as I can. Thanks for understanding. And I write back, I go, Johnny, I am so, so sorry. When I sent the text yesterday, I thought, oh, man, John is dealing with some situations right now. He can't be doing radio broadcast. He can't be doing guest appearances right now. And I told him, I go, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you getting back. Get your team stuff done, and we'll figure it out at a later date. I felt like such a jerk 
you know, like he must be going to himself. Aren't you like following what's happening with our team? Yeah. Dumbass. No, not but at I all. Am. No. I, I but am. But you're not. But can't I am. Be. You can't. Be. I mean, I, the you Brandon Ayuk stuff, the Ayuk stuff I knew about. And I thought to myself, OK, that's not mm -hmm. cool. You know, like I, I feel for a, a guy who's in that situation. I say a guy I'm looking at it from Lynch's perspective. You know, hey, you think you got a Super Bowl team. You know, you you still got a little bit more time left with Brock Purdy making under a million dollars. Brock Purdy makes less than a million dollars a year. And and they've got a Super Bowl caliber roster and haven't been able to complete the job. And now you got a Brandon Ayuk who wants to hold out. Now you got maybe the most important player on your entire offense in your in your the left MVP tackle that wants team. to hold out. Yeah. That's who you pay. You pay mm -hmm. him. And you pay him immediately. Yeah. Don't give him any, don't give him everything he wants, but give him just enough so that he'll come in and get to yeah. work. Brandon Ayuk, bro, you can wait. You can wait. I don't know. You get too sassy, we'll just trade you. I right. don't know the cap situation of the San Francisco 49ers. I don't know, Figure it know out. anything other than <laughs> Learn you, you stunk without Trent Williams last year. You lost three in a row. You pay Trent Williams, and he's man, older. Man. I get it, but so you can't you, – you need that guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I felt so bad. I felt like such a jerk, you know. Like, here I am. I'm trying to get – a guy, you know, who's a friend of the show to come on the show. I'm thinking it's early in training camp. You know, this is probably a good time. And now you've got one star wide receiver and mm -hmm. you've got maybe your most important offensive player. And both guys are holding out when you have what you think is a Super Bowl team and you got to hurry up and try and win a Super Bowl before you have to put all your money, like 300 plus million dollars into your quarterback. And here's me, jerk trying to get him to come do a radio interview. Come on, man, do better. And I'm saying that to me. I got to do better. You know what I mean? All right, listen, um, lots to get to. There is a lot of NFL news besides just the Niners. We'll get to all of it. Let's do it. You mean to tell me Kevin Durant could just get a free trip and Jalen Brown telling y'all I can play? Y'all won't put – what they got to get – they will not put Jalen Brown on this team. They'll give them who get hurt. He's an NBA professional billionaire superstar player. I feel like this is just an opinion. The Olympics should be about Olympians, not about pros that come to represent as Olympians. Only on SportsGrid. Where are you at in terms of a starting lineup? What do you want to see – from Team USA. I think he'll get guys involved, and then there's your lockdown defender at the point guard, the point of attack, right? I do like Curry. I would then go with Ant. I like Ant over Booker. I think if you look at the way the Canada game was, they looked kind of slow starting, and then they, they kind of got rolling. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. He talked about uh, Major League Baseball and its. Uh, it's rule or actually it's uh, it's relationship with sports betting and gambling integrity is the foremost concern and a lot of people are questioning that given all the scandals right there's uh, Mercado there's Pat Hoberg one of the best umpires in MLB suspended right now we don't exactly know what he did but he's been disciplined and he hasn't umpired a game this year Newswire only on sports grid Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Um, uh, starting off today, talking NFL, we'll move our way into baseball. Padres have been very hot. Dodgers were cooled off last night after a really hot start to the second half of the season. Clayton Kershaw will make his season debut tonight, and there's a lot of talk about Dave Roberts and his future as the manager of the Dodgers. We'll get to all of that on the way. Before we do, this segment of Kaplan and Crew is being brought to us by our friends at Life Brew, L Y F E lifebrew.com it's mushroom coffee everybody it is a brand new national craze everybody's talking about mushroom coffee and if you're saying to yourself right now really everybody yeah now we're talking about it too 
What is the benefit of mushroom coffee? Well, these are just naturally grown mushrooms and they turn it into a coffee product. It has like a latte kind of a texture and sort of a little bit of like a coconutty sweetness to it. The lion's mane, uh, which is one of the mushrooms in here, supports memory, focus, and nerve regeneration. The shiitake mushroom, great for vitamin B, which is like energy and clarity. Turkey tail mushroom, great for antioxidants and supports gut health. And by the way, it's 30% off when you use our code GREATFRIENDS. LifeBrew, L-Y-F-E, LifeBrew.com. And usually, our friend Brett Weiss, who owns LifeBrew, when you put in that code GREATFRIENDS, he wants you to keep coming back for more and more. And because he's in California and you're in other parts of the country, he kind of throws in a bunch of pre-rolls for you. So take that for what it's worth. You feel me on that? Uh, Grande, how's Mama Padilla doing on her new Life Brew Supply? Uh, she's doing great. And she keeps running low, so she must be using it. She keeps hitting me up. I need more. Wow. Yeah. Boy, she she drinking the hell out of that mushroom coffee. Boy. I haven't seen Mama Padilla in a while, so it's just it's all via text message, you know? I really? haven't seen Mom in like two months. Yeah. Really? I haven't seen you. Go visit your mother. What's wrong with you? Yeah, would love to, but don't got don't got the bandwidth. Oh, we don't have bandwidth for moms. Don't got the bandwidth to leave town. Yeah, I understand. You know, I understand. Got this Listen. new venture, you know, we're on Sports Grid now. We're on Sirius now. Can't just take days off like I used to. So feeling that, yeah. feeling that. Even though I'm taking a few days off next week. Oh, you are? Yeah, just leaving you guys to the show. Yeah, I'm out of here. What days? Uh, Thursday, Friday. You're not doing the show from Mammoth? No. The no. commitment is just I know that's crazy. Hear that, Brown? That's crazy, Strong. dude. Strong crazy. You at times, Are you doing Strong. LA? No. Mm. No. I don't know I'm I off. That. I'm off LA radio. I'm off sports grid. I'm I believe off that when I turn on the LA radio station, I don't hear you. Okay. So you you think that I would take off two days from this show to go with my girlfriend up to Mammoth for our annual trip to the uh, blues festival, and that mm -hmm. I would not do this show, but I would still do that show. That's what you think? Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't would 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 be the time, first time. <laughs> what time does the festival start? I don't know. Well, you know. You could easily do this and skip L.A. because the stuff don't start at 10 a.m. Fair. There's right. no skiing. Fair. There's no skiing. True. Facts. Not facts. Okay. But I do have, I do have a girlfriend. You got to do brunch. Who needs? Who desperately needs some man time? You know, That's you know me. what it I'm is, the man. You know what it is, Browner. Browner, let's be real. I know exactly what, why he's not doing this show. Why? Romantic lunches with bottles of rosé. Hey, hey, hey! hey you got to listen. You got to be present. You got to invest time into these relationships, yo. Ain't, no, ain't nobody tell her to go to Vancouver. What you mean? <laughs> nobody tell her to go to Vancouver. She could have been here hanging out at the track, <laughs> having a day. She don't ran off in yeah. Vancouver somewhere. For somebody wedding, people get married all the time and they get divorced. You ain't got to be going to that. Are you People gonna film a divorce to nobody? Are you? That brings me to my next question. Are you gonna film a cameo for yourself? Possibly asking a question. Hey, Maybe. let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Um, it's beautiful up you, there right now. For those of you yeah. that heard this story yesterday, um, I did a cameo for one of our great listeners, and she asked me to break up with her boyfriend, which I did for her, uh, and now. I think I'm going into a very niche world of I'm available on Cameo to break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm available if you need me to ask somebody to marry you. I'm available mm -hmm. to do that. If you have a company and you need to fire an employee and you don't feel comfortable doing that, I will fire your employee for you. On the mm -hmm. flip side, if you want me to hire somebody for you, I'll do that too. I'm, I'm into Cameos now, which by the way, could I be later to the Cameo party? I'm into cameos now right. that, that I, I'm, I'm dealing with people's real lives. I'm available. I'm available. Have you heard of this uh, new uh, app that the kids are using nowadays mm. called TikTok? I, I've heard of TikTok. Are you I sure? Don't use, I don't use TikTok, but somebody no. told me today that they saw our TikTok. They're like, they're like, hey, I saw that TikTok about your breakup on Cameo. I'm like, wait, you saw that on Cameo? They're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, people are telling me they can't find me on Cameo. I'm here. I'm at Scott Kaplan. I'm on Cameo. I've got zero reviews so far. Send me the link. I'll put it on, on the screen. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. You've got zero <laughs> reviews? No one's reviewed your Cameo? No, I've only gotten two Cameos, man. Well, Molly could review him since she's one of two. That's and right. Again, I, I find that hard to believe that happened, man. I'm telling you, I mean, she's a tire slasher, bro. She's not the type of person that's going to have Scott <laughs> break up with somebody. <laughs> like that. No. Love you, girl, but still. I love you, girl. I do indeed. All right, listen, let me get back to some football stuff because here's why. I want to play for you Jim Harbaugh, who I promise you 
is going to entertain us all football season long. I want to play some audio for you from Antonio Pierce, the new head coach of the Raiders, who I'm going to be a big fan of this year, and one of Browner's favorite quarterbacks already looking good in camp. Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Where are you at in terms of a starting lineup? What you want to see from Team USA? I think he'll get guys involved, and then there's your lockdown defender at the point guard, the point of attack, right? I do like Curry. I would then go with Ant. I like Ant over Booker. I think if you look at the way the Canada game was, they looked kind of slow starting, and then they kind of got rolling. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. He talked about uh, Major League Baseball and its uh, its rule, or actually its uh, its relationship with sports betting and gambling. Integrity is the foremost concern, and a lot of people are questioning that given all the scandals, right? There's uh, Mercano, there's Pat Hoberg, one of the best umpires in MLB suspended right now. We don't exactly know what he did, but he's been disciplined, and he hasn't umpired a game this year. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid the seven mile casino studios seven mile casino.com and uh, i want to just jump right into some football stuff and i'll just remind everybody if you're on our live youtube chat if you go to youtube.com slash kaplan and crew or you search kaplan and crew on youtube you can get involved in our live youtube chat and we're going to put your name and your comments up on tv for everybody to see so make sure you got your picture on your profile on youtube because then we're going to put your face all over national tv especially if you're hot like the three of us, you know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, I'll start off with this. Browner, uh, one of your favorite quarterbacks is already looking pretty good in early training camp. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> what you mean? I'm on top of that. I saw that thing. I saw that rain make a heat through today. Yeah, you did, huh? Yeah, you I saw, saw that. You saw him slang that thing. I saw him slang that thing with efficiency, too, right in the pocket. Yeah, you you know that uh, people have been telling us that uh, that Russell Wilson, who spends his offseason here in San Diego, had Justin Fields at some really super fancy steakhouse. Uh, this was last week, so right before the report of training camp. And so, uh, yeah, it's making the rounds all over Twitter that Justin Fields is looking really good early in Steelers training camp. This is, is my favorite no one, time no one, of the year. No my one ever favorite. said he couldn't throw. He has a great arm. His inability to process the offense is the question. Can he develop that? If he develops that, they have a franchise quarterback. Because he can do what you just saw. I've seen him do that tons of times. I'm not shocked by that. Now, if he goes through progressions and he hits the third guy on a, on a, on a, on a slant route, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. I just if like only, that people, If only every like, quarterback in the league. Ball. Right, but if only every quarterback in the league could do what Browner just said, man, it would be so easy, right? If if this quarterback, name him, could read the offense, throw it to open receivers, process the defense, man, he's going to be good. You sound like a draft scout, dude. Hey, look, I, I, I'll i just make my prediction, okay? And Joe Rigby, you can write this down. You can call it a hot take, whatever you want to call it. My prediction is Justin Fields – becomes the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers over Russell Wilson. Now, it may not be going out on some great limb here, but Russell Wilson is getting the benefit of the doubt. He was brought in to be the starter, and Justin Fields was brought in after Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a veteran. He's been to two Super Bowls. He's won a Super Bowl. 
Um, he was he was statistically good in Denver, hardly great. Um, and and the Steelers and Mike Tomlin, they want a veteran leader for that team. Okay, I still think Justin Fields is going to be the better quarterback of the two. I may be proven wrong. Okay, and I'll just say this: I I'm going to be watching a lot of Steelers football this year because uh, my son now lives in Pittsburgh. I got a whole bunch of Pittsburgh in the DNA. I'll probably hit a couple of Steeler games at some point this year, but I'm actually rooting for Justin Fields. I don't think he'll start the season, but he will oh, no. play. Right. I don't think he'll start the season either. I think Russell Wilson will start, but I yeah. would say four, five, six games into the season, you know how certain teams like the New England Patriots, they're going to start Jacoby Brissett. But they may get to a point where they're not doing that well, and they that's when they go, you know what? It's time for Drake May. Let's get him some work. You know, if the Steelers start 0-2, Justin Fields will be the starter in week three. Like that's how I, I think that because Tomlin's under pressure too. So I don't I, I don't know. Didn't didn't Tomlin just sign like a contract extension? Mm -hmm. didn't, yeah. So he did. You, you say under pressure. I mean, I don't know that he's under that much pressure. You know, I don't know that it's like, you know, it ain't the, the Dave Roberts pressure. You know, Dave Roberts pressure is if you don't win the World Series this year for the Dodgers, everybody's gonna want you to be fired. I don't feel that way. Because, of course, I'm a Dave Roberts hunk, you know, but a lot of people do feel that way. And I think what the Dodgers have already done so far this year has been pretty incredible given their injuries. But a lot of people feel that way about Dave Roberts. I don't know that everybody feels that way about Mike Tomlin. There were people saying that he was on a hot seat last year and he was, I think he was uh, eight, nine and eight or eight and nine. And people were like, oh, he's always 500. It's like, OK, it's hard to win. Let me ask you guys a question. If Justin Fields, because it's just a presumption that we're all making that Russell Wilson's going to be the week one starter. What if, right. I don't think it's going to happen, but what if Justin Fields beats Russell Wilson in, in training camp and preseason? Does Russell Wilson have the ability no. to be a backup quarterback? No, yes. no, he, no, he it, does not. No, this he does is what not. I think. This, this is the best case scenario for the Steelers, that Justin Fields wins the job and is the starter, and Russell Wilson accepts the role of backup. Because regardless of what, Russell Wilson can come in and be successful with a slightly different version of the offense that you can run for Justin Fields. Justin Fields may not be able to do the offense that you want Russell Wilson to do. And so, and, and that's why I think it would be better if he won the job and started being Justin Fields rather than him coming in in week four. By the way, everything that we're talking about today is both of your faults, just so you guys know. I was a Russell Wilson fan. I liked Russell Wilson a lot when he was in mm -hmm. Seattle. And then you guys kept bringing up this, is he corny or is he cool? I kept saying he's cool. You guys kept cool. saying he's corny. And then all it of a sudden, cool. it was last year. I want to say it was about last year. Maybe it was two years ago where he had that Subway commercial. And, and he had the, um, what was the, the Danger name of Witch? Danger Russ. The Danger, yeah, Danger Witch. Witch. The Danger Witch. And, dude, America hated Russell Wilson so much in that moment that they put uh, so much pressure sold. on Subway. They were like, okay, mm -hmm. we're canceling the Danger Witch. Just yeah, yeah honestly, honestly, it's uh, it, and I, I blame Sierra for the corniness finally being exposed nationally because Ooh. she was so empowering to her man. She's like, just be you, boo, just be you. And what he is is corny as hell. And she was like, yeah, I love it. Like, I love it. Do that. Wear your outfits, you know, try and be cool. Put out your like your your, your posters that say like, you know, courage. And, and and write these crazy like hang in you know, there yeah come on everybody like that is russell wilson and sierra was the one that was like go do it and he did it but let me give him prop let me give her props though let me give her props ladies out there ladies ladies you support your man he feels like he can do anything okay he put a battery in his back so large and so charged this man went out there thought he could own the broncos okay had his own <laughs> office mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he did own the broncos he okay. did own the he, Broncos for a he year. He conquered an NFL organization <laughs> because this woman believed in him. He couldn't do that in Seattle. So, yes. ladies, back your man. Mm. Uh, I think the Steelers are screwed either way. Well, I just think that if I'm if I'm oh. the Steelers, I'm with Browner. I actually think that, that you you would love to see Justin Fields win the job. Correct. Because Russell Wilson, there's no there's no risk. You know, if, if you if you no, no, but if you cut him, you're not paying him anything. His money is being paid by Denver yeah. because he because he doesn't have the personality to be a backup quarterback. He actually, I believe, would be a disruptive guy on your team oh. to be a backup. That's how I feel about Russell Wilson. Maybe I could be proven wrong. Yeah. I just think possible. that in that division, it doesn't really matter. Like you're not Joe Burrow, you're not Lamar Jackson, you're not winning the division. You're you're the Padres. You're you're trying to be a, a wild card team and praying that you make the playoffs. 
Hey, by the way, speaking of Lamar Jackson, I saw today that he left practice again. He says he's sick. Um, he's missed a couple of practices. He went out. He, they said he pat practiced for like a couple of minutes. And then the he's like, I don't, got? I don't feel good. When are we going to start talking about Lamar Jackson's health and what's really going Dabba. on? Because Dabba, he lost 25 tab, pounds this offseason. He lost 25 pounds this offseason. He says it was on purpose. Or is he just truly sick? 25 Conspiracy pounds. Theories. 25 pounds. You lost 25 pounds. You didn't read about that? No, I knew that he'd been sick for a couple of days and that, you know, he'd missed a few practices, but I didn't Dude, realize 25 this man, pounds. This man is weighing 200 even as an Ooh. NFL quarterback. That's skinny, dude. Skinny. He correct. lost, and he says he lost that weight on purpose. Why? I mean, guy takes a lot of hits. Guy, guy does a lot of running. Why would he? Mm. Why would he? I mean, listen, that, that's the thing. You know, I was watching receiver last night. So now I'm into episode three. I'm two yeah. and a half episodes into the season because last night I went to. Because you only see, do halves? Be, here's why. <laughs> I, I, people have been hitting me up based on our conversation yesterday about how much TV do you watch? And I said I don't watch that much TV. I can put in about 30 minutes a day, and it's always right before I'm going to sleep. Some people read before bed. I watch TV before bed. Last night I was watching Receiver episode three. Amon Ross St. Brown had come back from an injury, right? And he had this oblique yes. injury and he was playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it, it, it seemed to me the way they presented it was like on the first play that he made, he makes this catch and he sees the defenders converging on him. And rather than lowering his head and trying to deliver a hit, he went down to avoid being hit. He goes over to the sideline and the receiver coach is like, yo man, what's up? And I'm on top. Ross St. Brown's like, what, what's, what's, what's up? And he goes, what, you don't want to, you don't want to be hit. And he's like, Hey man, and he's talking to his coach. He goes, hey, man, I'm, I'm trying to play this game for a long time. I'm trying to be about longevity. I'm not about right. here to take these, these unnecessary hits. And then he wound up spending like the next, I don't know, however long it was on the show, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, complaining to his teammates that his coach was calling him weak for not taking the hit, which, by the way, he then went on to say, I took plenty of hits in that game, and they did. So, yeah, listen, um, that Lamar Jackson story is under the radar as far as I'm concerned. All right, Jim Harbaugh is entertaining us, and we got to hear what Antonio Pierce said. Let's get to these guys. As of July 22nd, we start a new deal with a monster distribution platform called Sports Grid, and we'll be live every day on national radio on Sirius XM channel 159, and we will be live on their national television uh, platform every day from 10 a.m. till noon. Only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. Sacramento with the King, Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. That's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line, only on Sports Grid broadcasting live at this moment on sports grid all over the country on Sirius channel 159 and on uh, all over TV, whether you're using a Samsung or a Vizio or you're using Amazon prime or uh, you're using a Roku, whatever service you're doing. So um, we're watching the Padres now Padres and nationals have come back from a weather delay Padres up three, nothing. I am going to baseball here in just a couple of minutes between what the Padres have been doing in Washington, what they've got upcoming in Baltimore and uh, what the Dodgers have been doing uh, in the first part of this season.
and day really in baseball is the return of Clayton Kershaw tonight. We'll get to all of the baseball stuff coming up. But let me go back to Harbaugh here for a second. By the way, this segment is being brought to us by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty, our man Gary Cooper, been with the show for over 20 years. So if you're moving into San Diego and you need the guy, he's he, he's him. If you are moving out of San Diego County or Southern California, Gary can help you buy, he can help you sell, he can help you get into a new Home equity line of credit, if that's what you need. Talk to Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. All right, Grande, you want to start with Harbaugh? You want to start with Pierce? Who do you want to hear from first as well, training we, camps are way underway? Uh, at the end of yesterday's show, if you guys missed it, we did play this John uh, Jim Harbaugh uh, quote. He was asked yesterday about what it's like to be back at camp, back in the NFL with the Chargers. And if you haven't seen it by now, you're under a rock because everybody picked this thing up because Jim Harbaugh is the ultimate weirdo. Just the way it feels, I mean, feels like – New Year's Day, you know, feels like being born. Feels like coming out of the womb, you know. It's like you're in there and it's, it's comfortable and it's safe. And uh, and now poof, you're out, you're born, the lights are on, the, you know, it's bright. You got chaos, people people looking at you, people people talking at you. And um, uh, just feels good to, you know, have it happen. Do you think Jim Harbaugh remembers the feeling of coming out of the womb? Yeah, I was trying to think the same thing. Like, I'm trying to remember that day, you know, where I emerged from my mother's, <laughs> you know. Belly. Did John Harbaugh always know he was this weird and he just didn't tell us? Yo, Did John was a weirdo, too, this this offseason. Like, John was doing some crazy, like, motivational thing when it came to Lamar Jackson, too. I could pull that up if you want. Because yeah, because that's that's the one where he was talking about how, how we're supporting Lamar. He's going to be the best quarterback in the history of the NFL, that whole thing. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. But again, John, John but again, Harbaugh doesn't have a history of being weird. Jim Harbaugh has a long, healthy history of saying and being weird. So if John Harbaugh had to know his brother was weird this whole time they were growing up. <laughs> what if the Harbaugh's are just weird? Oh, they are weird. You're true too. What if no, Jack is weird? No, Jack's weird too. I mean, yeah. dad's dad's a little weird. I remember, uh, you know, Jack was the assistant head coach my freshman year at Pitt, and uh, and every time he would see me, he'd go. Hey, Capper, you ready to lay the wood? I was like, I'm, you know, I'm just sort of a kicker coach. I'm just going to, yeah. he, he's like, yeah, but on kickoff coverage, man, you got to lay the wood. I'm like, no, okay. the apple, what's that saying? The apple don't fall far from the tree. They got yeah. it. They got it from somewhere, dude. Yeah. Who Did got you, it better than us? Yeah. Did you uh, here's ever John keep Harbaugh. The ball off? Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Here's John Harbaugh's thing. But we take it personally. You know, Lamar's a guy all his life. Lamar Jackson has been a guy who's been answering those same questions. I'm talking about since he was a kid, junior high, high school, college, the draft, the success he's had in the National Football League, and it still comes up. The vision for Lamar Jackson, and it's a vision. It's something you see it like it's already happened. You can see it like it's already been done. The victory has already been won when you pour into a vision. And the vision that we have together is that Lamar Jackson – is going to become and be known and be recognized as the greatest quarterback ever to play in the history of the National Football League. Wait, What's that, wrong with that? Yeah. That wasn't uh, no, weird. No, that was 35 seconds of a three-minute clip I had to cut down, and I cut out the weirdness of it. I should have kept the weirdness in. Yeah, the whole point was the weirdness. <laughs> I mean, I like, the, the, I like yeah. a coach trying to sell his player, and I like a, a coach yeah. letting his player know, we got you, we think you're the best. Find another two-time MVP in the NFL right now. This is uh, short. This yeah. is very short. Who else is there? I think Mahomes is on there. I think that's it. Has Mahomes been a two-time MVP? Oh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers yeah. as well. Right. It's a short list. Mm. By the way, um, Aaron Rodgers kind of on the down low right now, right? Like they're they're you would think that for all that we're talking about Lamar Jackson's weight loss or him being sick, or the Rams all of a sudden suffer a serious injury to one of their defensive backs. Um, you know, guys holding out. You would think that there'd be some Aaron Rodgers stuff. Um, thus far, not seeing, hearing much on Aaron Rodgers. Good. Keep it that way. We've heard enough not, of him when he wasn't. Playing. Nah, I need more Aaron Rodgers. Mm -mm. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, you just he got you fined fifty thousand dollars for missing minicamp. Yeah, but I thought it was excused. Right. Correct. Huh. That's mm. weird. Hmm. Mm. And then he went on weird. a barstool podcast and was explaining why he thinks minicamp is stupid and how mm -hmm. it's not even minicamp. It's just like four days of running around in shorts. He was like the way it used to be 
back in my day, minicamp was actual five days of two a days, you know, sometimes three a days. And then he's like, now this new thing with the NLPA and the CBA, we're not even practicing. So what did I really miss? I didn't miss anything. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All that. $50,000 right. fine. Ooh. All right. What yeah. are we about to hear from Antonio Pierce? I know we got a lot of Raider fans who tune in. And I'm, by the way, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like part of the Raider nation, but I'm mm -hmm. rooting for the Raiders. I am, I am rooting to see Antonio Pierce succeed. You know I'm rooting for the Raiders. Well, we know. I mean, that representation matters. Uh, mm -hmm. Luke Getze, their offensive coordinator. I'm rooting for Luke. Okay. Ooh. I'm rooting for yeah, the Raiders yeah. to bring in Tom Brady. Oh, that would Luke be great. Luke Getze's not good, bro. Well, Luke Getze is Luke not Getze good is yet. Luke Getze is not good because he had Justin Fields. Luke Getze is not good, bro. <laughs> you will see. Okay. You will see. Well, it, it may be hard and, for us to see with the Raiders because right. they don't. they still don't have a quarterback. And so... We don't really know. If you're a bomb coordinator, if you if you're a coordinator who deserves a head job, you make lemonade out of lemons, baby. What well, you mean? I, I didn't you say know Luke that's false. Yeah, I didn't say Luke Getzey was a guy who deserved a head job. I didn't say that at all. All I'm saying you is that I'm rooting for the guy. You know that you need a quarterback to look good. You know this. Wow. All right. If you're a good if you're a good coordinator, you can be you can rebuild Geno Smith and have him out there. Looking like he can, you know, play real football. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're a good offensive head coach, you can take Zach Wilson and make him look like oh, really? a real NFL. How'd that happen? Yeah. Did how'd that yeah. go? Did that go well? That, we're about to find happening? out. Where are we going to find that out? out? Where are we finding that Broncos. out? He's on the hey, Broncos now. Zach Wilson ain't going to be no starting quarterback for the Broncos. You don't think starter? they? Who the starter? I mean, if I had to take oh, a guess. Nick? Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather start both. Jared, I mean, Wilson. twelfth pick, dude. Might yeah, as well, why not? That's what I'd rather do. Uh, well, all right, we'll get to Antonio Pierce. How about that then? We'll get to Antonio Pierce in just a matter of moments, and then that? I'm gonna and then I'm gonna make a switch at the top of the hour and switch. I'm going into some baseball because I'm telling you right now, this Clayton Kershaw story is a big deal, and Padre fans, you guys may not want to hear it, but I'm telling you, it it is a big deal. mean to tell me Kevin Durant could just get a free trip and Jalen Brown telling y'all I can play y'all won't put what they gotta get they will not put Jalen Brown on this team they'll give them who get hurt he's an NBA professional billionaire superstar player I feel like this is just an opinion the Olympics should be about Olympians not about pros that come to represent as Olympians only on sports grid if this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. Sacramento with the King, Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Devin Carter, who they drafted early, Keegan Murray as well. A Kings team, DRS, that has been a playoff contender. Is it going to equate to a championship? Probably not. That's not the goal. Make your team better every offseason. The Kings definitely got better with that move here, Ben. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Brown man, I mentioned we're going to talk, uh, we're going to hear from Antonio Pierce and then. Uh, we're going to go from some football. We'll jump into some baseball. And uh, and then I'll just let everybody know, because a lot of you guys ask me, hey, where's Jason Lawhead? How come we haven't seen him or heard him on the show in a while? Jason Lawhead, comedian slash basketball referee slash NBA analyst on this show. Jason Lawhead is coming back today after some crazy trip he had in Africa. And, dude, all I know is I saw pictures of Jason on Instagram. Like, he's like, look at this monkey. 
with like a little baby monkey climbing up this tree. And it's the same kind of zoo I work in when I'm up in downtown LA because there's this lady who sits on the corner of the street and she got this cat that sits on her back, on her backpack. And the cat's hind legs or front legs are on her head and the back legs are on her backpack. And this girl just go walking around town all day long, just out there with that cat on her head. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Do you think that Jason's going to describe his trip to Africa as um, a healing vacation of a lifetime? Healing, huh? I saw Dan Levitard said that when he went to Africa like two weeks ago. Really? He was he, he was he, healed? He went with Ron Miguel, <laughs> the world-renowned like zoo person. So he was able zoo to get like hella up Hold close on one second. Animal. Time out. He's like a zoo man. <laughs> the world-renowned zoo person? Zoo person. Zoo He's man. a person from a zoo. Yeah. He's a zoo man. He, he works at the zoo. He like be getting up close with animals all the time, bro. If oh, yeah, now, Jason go with if, Jack Hanna? If I could go to Africa with somebody who can get you right up close to them animals, I wouldn't go. But for somebody who's into that kind of stuff and you go, it will be different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, big shout out to my people today. I noticed both of you guys, uh, Browner, you're wearing your San Diego hat today, but otherwise unmarked territory all around the, the torso area. Grande mm -hmm. also unmarked in black today. I'm giving a shout out to my friends at Yachtly Crew. Okay, America's number one yacht rock band, and they're on tour right now, and they are all over the place. And if you ever have a chance to see Yachtly Crew, and if you're following them on Instagram, get out and see them, because let me tell you something. They put on one of the best shows, especially during the summer. You're going to love these guys. Shout out to my boys at Yachtly Crew. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Antonio Pierce, what are we about to hear from the Raiders head coach? Hey, Antonio. Gardner Minshew's on your team now. Aiden O'Connell's still on your team. Who's your starting quarterback? When are you going to name one? When it's right, when it's obvious, like okay, it's, it's like a no-brainer. No need to rush it. I mean, but when it's when it's when it's clear and it's evident, then we need to make that decision and move forward. Uh, okay. Well, um, if I were Antonio Pierce, I'd consult with Devonte Adams. <laughs> Yo, yeah. man, just just wait till you get more into receiver. Then you're definitely going to say that. Really? Yeah. I was in last night into episode three. And I was watching, and it was um, it was Amon Ross St. Brown had come back from an injury, mm -hmm. and George Kittle was going through like all of his positive affirmations. I'm strong, I'm fast, I'm tough. Because he keeps like, getting hurt, right? Yeah, he's getting <laughs> yeah. beat up, and he was like, "I'm not hurt. Yeah, I can do this." <laughs> yeah, right. So, and then I fell asleep, and then I, I yeah. fell. I, I I literally turned off the TV. I was 25 minutes into like a 55 minute episode. You don't really realize because I think in quarterbacks they did a really good job of showing how beat up Kirk Cousins was, mm -hmm. but everybody else was was kind of okay. You know, they showed Mahomes going through all the, obviously the ankle stuff, but in this spoiler alert, in this series, every receiver gets jacked up. Every single one of them. Devontae's yeah. hurt. Debo's hurt. Kittle's hurt. Jefferson's hurt. Obviously missed seven games. St. Brown's hurt. They're all hurt. Like, every single one of them gets just crushed. And they all have different levels of quarterback, right? So it's like Devontae's got the trash of the show. You know, Kirk gets hurt, so then Jefferson's dealing with the trash. But then the Niners, they have just consistently Brock Purdy the whole time. Jared Goff is consistently the whole time. So it didn't matter what level of quarterback. They all got hurt. All of them. They were all beat up. Yep, I know. All right, well, listen, let's do this. Um, as we head towards the top of the hour, how about a little shout-out? A little love for everybody who's watching right now, who's involved in our live YouTube chat. All you have to do is go to youtube.com slash Kaplan and crew. Here's our boy, Darth Navarro. Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell going to lead my Raiders to glory of eight and nine. <laughs> Don't sleep on Gardner Minshew, dog. Don't yeah. sleep on Gardner Minshew. Hey, I agree. Don't sleep on Gardner Minshew. Okay. Because Gardner Minshew, by the way, for everybody that's watching, like, what are you doing? Um, when it's I'm not trying, working, yeah, you see, look crazy. No, the lasers. I just wanted some lasers right there. That's all. For everybody who's watching, you're seeing it. Everybody's listening. He's like, what the hell are you talking about? Mm -hmm. um, don't sleep on Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is one of those guys that is a career backup, but when given a chance to play, teams seem to rally around him. Yeah. He's kind of like an elevated Fitzpatrick. Like, yeah, I think was great for like two or three games at a time, and but then, then it. and then it just kind of run its course. Minshew. You give him eight, nine games, he's gonna he's gonna throw for yards. You're gonna win some games, and you're gonna mm -hmm. be pretty much in everything. And, but then every like every third game, he might throw four picks. It's a wild so, ride. All right. So shout out to Darth Navarro. Who else, Grande? Who else are we gonna say hello to here today? We'll that's the only one I favorited so far. So that's it. It's the only one you favorited. I see you all. Yeah, we see you. 
We see you guys out there. Shout out to Rusty Bones. Shout out to Miss Molly, to Dead Meow, to the Neil Saw, and to uh, everybody who's who's hanging with us right now. We appreciate all you guys being here, and we're headed towards the top of the hour. Here's what we're going to do. The Dodgers and Kershaw, the return tonight, and the future of Dave Roberts will lead us off. <laughs> 